Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to tackle replacing the fork seals on our 2007 Honda Goldwing GL1800. Turns out when I was doing the brake service on this one, I noticed that they were leaking and that's definitely something we need to take care of. So, as far as the parts go, it's basically there's two seal kits that you're going to need to order. We're going to start off with that. You need one for the right leg, one for the left leg. And if you noticed in the parts diagram, that is going to be the same part number. And this is what you're going to have in there. You have an upper seal and then an internal seal. So what tools are we going to need to pull this off? Well, it's not that expansive of a list. You will need to have a certain range of sockets, let's say from an 8 up to a 22 millimeter. On the Allen side, you want to go from a 3 at least up to a 6. But there's one in particular that you need to acquire. It's going to be a 6 millimeter that actually has a long extension on it. Beyond that, need a good wrench range in between 8 up to 17 millimeter, a good uh, ratchet as well as a good torque wrench, a couple of screwdrivers, fair pliers. Beyond that, make sure you've got some good electrical tape nearby. Now on the special tool side, the biggest one you're going to need to find is a 45 millimeter seal driver. Got to have that to really get these seals into position. Beyond that, just need to pick up some good suspension fluid. I'm going with the OEM, so 10 weight. It's up to you if you want to go a little bit heavier, as some riders do that, to get a more plush feel up front. Completely up to you. Now, I want to warn you, when we start going through this, I may discover that there are other parts that are worn that need to be replaced. Now, if you're having trouble coming up with a parts list for your machine, look at that description. There's a little arrow over to the right, right beside the description that's going to take you to the parts list that we ended up using on this machine should we have to add anything to it. Now if your machine isn't exactly like the one that I'm working on then you need to go to partzilla.com. It's very easy to use. There you'll need to select the manufacturer, the category, the year, and then the model. At that point you're going to see all the different components for your particular machine to make sure that you're going to get the right part. Now, if you're still having a little bit of trouble, give us a call at 1-877-473-4595. We'll be glad to help get you the correct part for your machine and get it to you quickly. So, once you've got your parts and all your tools together, we can go over there and I'll guide you through it. So, let's go. All right, guys, before we dive into this, first the order of business is to go ahead and bring the machine up get something to support the front end of the machine, and then actually anchor down all four corners because I don't want this thing falling on me. All right, that should hold it still. So let's go ahead and get the upper fender off. These first ones are just a five millimeter Allen. Do yourself a favor when you're taking this apart, try to leave them together because there's a couple of different lengths that we're gonna run into and in designs as we're pulling this apart. So keep them all grouped together. All right, next we want to get our calipers off and you'll notice that it's different one side to the other. Over here, it's just going to be a pair of 12 millimeters. On the other side, let's go ahead and get the brake pads out of the caliper. That way it'll uh, clear the rotor. Let's remove that little plastic stopper and then we're going after that Allen on the inside. And that is a five millimeter. There we go. Now I should just drop out. Now we can go ahead and remove that six millimeter Allen at the bottom and then that T40 Torx at the top. All right, now we can remove that 22 millimeter axle nut. Then we can loosen up our pinch bolts on either side. Don't have to remove them, just loosen them up. And those are 12 millimeters. Pull the axle out, just put a screwdriver into our axle, lift up on the tire a little bit, and now we should be able to wiggle it out. These are going to fall out eventually anyway, so go ahead and get these two spacers out. All right, now that we've got the front tire out of the way, we're going to continue by getting all the, uh, the different brake parts disconnected. We want to pull just the top half of this plunger assembly. That's a four millimeter Allen. Brackets, brackets everywhere. Let's go ahead and take off that front bracket for the fender and see if we can get it to angle out of there. I do not want to scratch it. Alrighty. <laughs> That's going to be fun to put back together. 
All right, well, I don't think we need to zip tie up anything, but I kind of like the way it's hanging, so I think we're good. Let's go ahead and get that cross member off, and then we'll lower down the machine and start attacking the top of the forks. Hidden inside this cross member are four five millimeter Allens. Once we remove those, it should split in half and release from the tubes. Chances are you don't have one on yours. So it is aftermarket and I can see the manufacturer on the top of it. I mean, the guy that owned this bike, he really did do a fantastic job of taking care of it. He was actually president of the local Goldwing Riders Club. All right, so we need to remove this section. It's basically just pull. And get it out just a little bit. You have to reach around and disconnect the tweeters little rubber gasket then you can reach in and release it by pushing that top section down right there and now just need to unplug it right above the key what i was having to do is reach in there and push down on this hard enough to where it releases that latch so once you get that it'll pull off I actually i had to get a pair of pliers just to push down on it hard enough Next, let's get the display speedo out, starting with these four eight millimeter bolts. Real trick here, just pull it out far enough where you can get your hand to the back and release the cable. There we go. There were three cables that we had to get to each one of them, you pull this back, and then you have to push down on these releases. With that out of the way, we can get this upper cover off, loosen up both of our caps. That'll just make it easier to disassemble once we get it over to the tear down bench. Each cap's just a 17. Yeah, trying to hold it still on the bench, it's almost impossible. <clears throat> Then we can loosen up the pinch bolts and drop each leg out. We've got two pinch bolts up top and then four at the bottom. So you do not have to remove these. You just want to loosen them up. Okay, let's head over to the bench, get these pulled apart. We'll start with the left one. We're going to take off the cap. I mean, there are springs in here for the getting a lot of pressure on them so it's not that tough to get it to release whenever I'm pulling apart forks like this lay them out like you're looking at the diagram so you can get them back together correctly take out the spring and then get all the fluid out of it and notice how it came out and also notice there was a small washer at the top of it Ooh, look at that. That had been in there for a long time. So we may have some more worn parts inside other than just the seals that we may have to address because there's a lot of stiction there. It should actually be moving a lot more freely than that. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Good grief, opening this one up. It shouldn't be anything like that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get that dust seal out. Put this in the clamp. A little towel so we don't scar it up too bad. Just use a flat blade. Then we're going to remove this uh, bolt at the bottom and that's a six millimeter Allen. Go ahead and get it out. That's potentially going to turn that, so you may have to grab the tube if it starts turning. I think somebody's been into this one before. Is that bolt on the bottom, it does not look good. It's actually an Allen head, and you can tell it's been almost stripped. And to answer your question you're thinking about right now, yes, we're gonna be replacing this bolt. 
once it comes out. It's pretty obvious, take a peek in there, be able to see that that's looking less like an octagon and more like a circle, and that's not what we want. So try as I might to keep the correct size in there, it is just too wallowed out and it, it's, it's not holding it well enough. So what we're going to do is use a little bit larger Allen. Now we don't want to go to a 7 millimeter. that would be much too large to try to cram in there. But only a third of a millimeter larger would be a SAE or standard size Allen, a quarter inch. And that's what we're going to use. Now this is going to be a, a sacrificial lamb. So it probably won't be reusable after I do this. Plus it has what they call a ball end and I don't want that. I want a sharp edge. So what I'm going to do is just grind that off and we're going to take the hammer, cram it in there and then hope it holds. Looking good so far. I don't want to get overly confident though. All right, I think we were going to be able to grab this enough, but the piston is actually turning on the inside of the tube. So what we need to do to stop that is reinstall temporarily our spring, the washer, the spacer, and the cap, and that should hold it still. Really shouldn't have to tighten this all the way down, just enough to hold it still. Now, let's see if we can get her to release. Got it. We were right at the edge and that little bit of impact was able to finish it off. Sometimes you have to be a little bit creative to uh, extract bolts that don't want to come out. Now pull it back apart, get that slider out. All right, next we need to reach in here and bring out this metal clip, but be careful not to scratch your fork tube. Just want to lift it out of the groove, flip it toward the outside. Now we just want to take the tube and just pull it through. It's going to have a fair amount of resistance on it. Yeah, I have plenty of shop tiles laying around. <laughs> All right, we're definitely replacing this seal and this dust cap, and I can go ahead and tell you that we're going to need to replace our bushings because these are obviously worn down. I mean, they're not supposed to look like this at all. So we're going to replace both the fork guide and the fork tube bushings here on the end. So I'm going to get those on order. And in the meantime, I'm going to get all of this cleaned up. I'm going to be using some uh, brake cleaner to do so because clean is the name of the game. Now that all this nasty fluid is out, we need to make sure that everything is spotless on the inside because if it's not, then that stuff acts like a honing device. I mean, it gets any little grit gets in any of these areas, it'll just start wearing it out prematurely. And we'd like for this rebuild to last a long time. Now, I like using the brake cleaner to do this, but brake cleaner is gonna make rubber swell and that's gonna screw up any of your O-rings or seals or anything like that. Only do what I'm doing if you plan on replacing everything made out of rubber. Other important thing is once uh, you've got it cleaned out, get some compressed air and just make sure everything is blown out. Let it dry completely before you put it back together. Also want to look at the spring and make sure it hadn't been collapsed too much because it should be 12.93 inches and it's actually 13 and a quarter. So I was right, somebody has been into this, uh, this fork and at least replace the springs at some point in its life, which is a good thing. Um, many riders out there consider the stock springs a little too soft, makes the front end you know, dive a little too much. So we'll definitely be reusing those. All right, everything's cleaned up reasonably well. Now let's go get my parts and get this thing put back together. Yeah, I know we started this video with just one part number, but if you need the parts list for this, check the link in the description below the video, and it's going to take you to the parts list that we ended up using on this machine. So, all that being said, let's start replacing some of these bushings. All we need to do to remove these, just take a screwdriver, flat blade, rotate it, 
and then it'll lift up over that edge. And they're off. And let's start by putting our fork tube bushing on the slider. Only spread it apart enough to get it over the tube. Once you get it started, and take a screwdriver, carefully turn just enough to get it to slide over the rest of the way, and then release it into the grooves. Let's put a little bit of oil on it. All right, now we can take our housing, get it over in the vise, and start putting it together. Get the bottom out. Then you may have to align that bottom section to get the threads in the right place. And we're going to take our new bolt with our new washer, put a little Loctite on it, see if we can get it started. All right, if it does not want to let you start it yet, because everything's just rotating so freely, what we can do is take our spring temporarily and our spacer, pop those two in place. Then that gives you something to push against. Now we can get it started up. bottomed out. Now with that held in place, let's go ahead and torque it to 15 foot-pounds. That'll do it. Let's keep going. Next we need to get our guide bushing in place. Carefully getting it started. And what we're going to do is use our upper ring temporarily along with our old guide. We just want to make sure it's cleaned up. Now we're going to get that new one seated in there. That should do it. And before we start putting our seals in, we need to cover this area where I can see there's just a little bit of pitting. You can do it with wax paper. I've seen people do it with just regular paper and uh, actually electrical tape. That's the way I'm gonna do it. So I'm just cleaning this off where the tape will actually adhere. The tube's all the way down inside. So we wanna cover the area from here up. That's important. You can only put one layer on here, otherwise we're not going to be able to get these on. With that done, go ahead and put a little bit of oil so the seals will go over there smoothly. We're going to put our lower ring on first. We want to make sure the flat section is going down and this camfered uh, or notched area is going up. And then our what they call the packing ring is actually going to fit into it like this. See how nice and neat that is. walk it down. Now take our upper one, slide it into place. Take our installer, get it to seat all the way down. Should do it. Now put a little bit more oil on our tape, grab our new seal, get some oil around the inside of it. Now we want to install it with that cut edge facing up and you can see a little lip down there toward the bottom. Of course that's going to go that way. Get it in place. Seal installation tool one more time. Now you can look inside and see where that chamfered edge is just inside that, that groove. So that's going to give us enough room to get this locking collar back in. So bring it down. Being very careful not to scratch the fork tube. That's a good sound. That's a great sound. 
she is in, last but not least, the dust seal. I think that is it. She is bottomed out. Now, remember when we were taking this apart, how tough it was? I mean, look at that, the way it should be. Vast improvement. Now, we just need to set this up straight and put the correct amount of oil in it. To fill this up, we're going to be using the Honda oil, and we want to have roughly 17.9 fluid ounces going in, and that'll end up putting the level five inches from the top. So this one container is 16 fluid ounces, so we can pretty much go ahead and dump a whole new one in there. Then we're going to pump it a few times to get the air out of the passages. So we're going to be putting in about two more ounces. All right, we're getting close. What I'm going to do is take this to five and a quarter, lock it down, and that'll give me an idea of where it is in reference to that five inch mark. It's right at a quarter. I'm going to call that close enough there, guys. So our spring in, you want the tighter wound part of the spring to go in first, then a washer, and then our spacer at the top. We've got our new o-ring on. A little bit of oil. Now bring the, the tube up. Okay, we're going to tighten this down, but we won't do our final torque until we actually have it on the machine because we have no way to really hold this still. All right, she's snug down. So, let's lay this one to the side and get to work on that other one. And the right side is just a little bit different than the left. It does start off the same way. Let's go ahead and get it in our vise. Before I break that cap loose, let's go ahead and at least just break that lower bolt, that six millimeter, break it free where we can get it out later without having to reinstall the spring. Take our cap off. It's just a 17 millimeter, just like the other side. See, there's a little bit of a difference already. Where the other one would just lift straight off, this one actually has a lock nut, and that is a 14 millimeter. So we need to reach in there, break that loose, and then unscrew it from the rod. There won't be a lot of torque on this. And as before, we're just going to lay it out. In the order it comes off and I am going to verify that everything's in the right orientation by referring to the drawings but so far it looks to be correct all right let's take it back out for a second and dump out the fluid okay it still needed to be changed but at least this one we could actually move it the other one I mean I was having to strain to do this Yeah, look how much that main seal is leaking right here. And that's supposed to have, what, 18 uh, ounces of fluid? That's not near 18 ounces of fluid. That's maybe seven, eight. So this one isn't in too good of shape either. Let's go ahead and remove that lower six millimeter bolt. And you'll notice that this one's going to be longer than the one that came out of the left side. Now let's go ahead and get our dust seal out. Flat blade screwdriver. Just take your time, work it out. Now we need to dig out that ring. This one's coming out much easier than the other one. Hmm. That other one's like it was welded in there almost. Let's go ahead and get that pull rod out. There's no reason for it to stay there. Now let's go ahead and pop the tube out. Now you noticed on the, uh, the left side, you had that lower backup ring, then you had the packing, and then you had the upper ring. Well, this actually has two of the same rings, and it does not have any packing inside of it. 
So once again, put together a little bit differently. Both of these backing rings, they're actually the same. So there's no need to keep those in order. So let's go ahead and pull off both of these. The top bushing, you can just slide it off the end of the fork tube. But the second one, like we did on the other leg, put in a flat blade screwdriver, turn it, get it over that edge, just pull it off this end. And then it's just going to be a matter of getting it cleaned back up. And then we'll start putting it back together. So we've got everything cleaned up. Let's go ahead and put the slider back in the, uh, the clamp. All right, at this point, go ahead and put on our fork tube bushing. Now I'll just put a little bit of oil around it. All right, we're all gonna replace that bolt like we did on the other side in the, a new ceiling washer, which is one of those copper ones. Also gonna add in a little bit of blue Loctite. Take your dampener rod. Go ahead and insert it in your fork tube, bring it out the bottom. Take this oil lock piece and then put it on the bottom of the dampener rod. We're going to carry this whole assembly over and put it into the slider. Let's see if I can get this to thread up. Now, what we're going to temporarily do is reinstall our spring and our cap so we can get this torqued. Now we're going to put 15 foot-pounds on it. Now we can take the cap and the spring and the spacer back out. We need to get our new bushing in. We're going to go ahead and get that down and into place. Now we're going to use both of our backup washers temporarily and our old bushing and then drive it into place. I think that got it. Now we need to clean this up, wrap it in vinyl tape, and then we can get our, uh, our seal on. When you're taping this, make sure that you don't overlap too much and take it all the way to the end of the tube and then fold the tape over. Let's coat down the tape with some oil. Right, this one is designed the same way, where you want that chamfered edge to be facing up and the flat edge to be going toward the bottom. All right, that looks like it. I can see the groove all the way around. Get our ring back in. Just take your time working it around until you hear it snap in place. There we go. Now let's get a little oil on our dust seal. I try not to put any on the outside because I actually I want that to really grab when we go to seat it. Now let's get this tape off, flip it straight up, then fill it up with some oil. Now bear in mind that this one has the same level as far as the five inches from the top of the tube that we're aiming for, but it actually has a little over two ounces less volume, and I think that's mainly because of the damper, so we don't need as much fluid to get it up to the same level. So it's 16 ounces plus or minus 0.08 ounces, so we're in that neighborhood. So I think we can safely go ahead and pour in 16 and that's going to get us right where we should be. And we want to work the damper a few times to get all those air bubbles out and we'll take a quick measurement. I think I hear most of them have dissipated now. It's really close. Look at there. Just barely on the tip. So that got it. Let's go ahead and get our spring installed. Remember the more compressed or tightly wound goes in first. Let me reach in here and grab that damper rod. Make sure that this lock nut is bottomed all the way down because when we put this together, we're gonna put on the cap 
until it stops and then we're going to bring the nut back up to it. I haven't lubricated that o-ring yet. Let's bring it up, cinch that down. We're just going to bottom this out and then we'll actually torque it once we get it tightened down in the clamps. Let's go get them both back on the machine. All right, we're going to put in the left one first. And of course, this is the one that has that anti-dive cylinder on the bottom, if you forgot. So we're going to go ahead and slide it up into place. And we're just going to lightly tighten it because we need to go up top to actually set the correct depth. So we're a little high right there. We want the top of the upper tree to be at the same level as the cap itself. And that should be it. So we want 19 foot pounds on the top pinch bolt and then 21 on the two lower ones. There we go. Looking good. Let's grab that right fork and then get it in place. Do the same torquing procedure on it. All right, as you're bringing this up, remember to bring the throttle cables on the back side of the fork tube. Because they're going to try to get in the way. There we go. Now with those torque down, we need to go back and put the final torque on our caps to 16 foot-pounds. So with all of that in place, let's go ahead and get the instrument cluster back in, a couple other covers, and get that, uh, that dash plate back on. Make sure everybody lights up. All right, let's get our dash back on. Don't forget to plug this in as well as the tweeters. All right, we're pretty much finished up top. Now let's go back up front and get it finished. Let's start by getting some of our brackets back in place, holding our uh, various lines. There's a whole lot going on on the front of this machine. I'm not gonna tighten these down yet until I'm sure I've got all the lines routed correctly. The top bracket actually goes through the fork and then into this threaded section that's part of the, the rear fender but on the front right here. I remember that being the tricky part. And then this one goes straight through on the other side. Now we're starting to get somewhere. With those two in place, we can go ahead and tighten down these forward brackets. We'll remount our anti-dive cylinder. And it's just a couple of four millimeter allens. Then we have this little speed sensor wire bracket that goes here. Tell you what, let's go and bring our front wheel over. Speed sensor ring on that side. Get our spacers in. I've got to center that spacer. There we go. Bring it up, slide that axle through so we can get it to twist back in there. There we go. All right, we've got it bottomed out against this other side. So temporarily, I want to go ahead and tighten down the left side pinch bolts. Now, we want to put on the axle nut and then get it torqued down. We're going to take it to 44 foot pounds. Next, we can go ahead and torque the right side pinch bolts to 16 foot pounds. Let's go back over to the left and I want to release those because I want to show you something here there is a line that needs to be a reference point to make sure that these forks are parallel. 
but each machine's gonna be a little bit different. So what you wanna do is pull against it as far as you can, and then push with the same amount of pressure in, and then between those two points, that's where you want it. You wanna pick that midpoint. And it may end up being right on that line, just like it was designed to be. But I've actually seen these machines to where that actual center point may be the width of the line out, or it may be the width of the line in. That one little change down here can make a whole big difference as far as it binding up up top. You can usually tell a machine that's a little bit out of whack by when it's sitting on its side stand. If you lift up on it, on the handlebars just a little bit, and it stays there, there's too much stiction in the fork. They should go back down to a natural resting position. So let's take a look at this one, see what we've got. All right, that's a little bit past the line. And that's a little bit on the inside, maybe a line and a half. So the midpoint should be about right there. Now that we found that midpoint, we can go ahead and torque these down to 16 foot-pounds. All right, let's start getting our uh, calipers mounted up, get our brake pads in there, get that brake pin in. Now, if you need detailed instructions on you know, remounting the, uh, the brake shoes, we have a video that covers that, so go check it out. Gonna leave these on loose until I get the front section put on. Okay, the last piece that needs to go on is this cross brace, and I'm actually not going to use the one that came off the machine, and I'm going to tell you why. This one is what they call just a two-piece, and it just clamps it, and it forces the forks to go to whatever measurement that it's set at, and that, that's not good, as we were discussing that lower section, how important that adjustment is. So the kind that you want to go with is one that is actually adjustable left to right, and that's what I'm going to use. So when you're putting this one together, you actually loosen up the left and right to where it has some play. You can take off the end caps, tighten those down, then we go in and tighten down the center section. You want the longer one to go up front, the shorter one in the back. Same thing for the other side. Everybody started, so let's get these tightened down. Now we can tighten down that center section and that'll finish it up. So now it doesn't have any, it's not forcing the forks. It's actually just holding them in place now. Well, all right guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. Well, listen, if you need the parts list for this, why don't you check the link in the description right below the video. It's already got a shopping cart ready with everything that we use to put this back together. Listen, if you like what you see, why don't you also hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at partzilla.com and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.